Homelessness was one of the big topics covered in Oregon's first official gubernatorial debate on Friday. Democrat Tina Kotek, Republican Christine Drazen, and unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson all answered a variety of questions during the hour-long debate. Some political analysts are calling this particular race one of the biggest to watch in the country this fall, and that the outcome could be unpredictable. So let's watch some of the debate and see how the candidates answered questions about how to solve Oregon's homeless crisis. It's really important that none of our neighbors are sleeping on the street. I have a five point plan on my website that specifically starts off by talking about the urgency of helping people move from the streets into permanent housing. And the key to that is to make sure we have more organized uh, street response teams that can work with people, develop those relationships, help them move from a tent into, into shelter and into permanency. We all talk about homelessness, but we have not infused a sense of urgency about it. As governor, I would convene, convene public safety, uh, social service experts, mental health experts, stop operating in these silos that have us fighting against each other about the best methodology to end homelessness. Do something about it. If we're gonna resolve this challenge, it cannot be partisan politics, because what we need is both compassion and accountability. What we have been experiencing in Oregon right now has enabled this problem to spiral out of control. And it will only get better if Oregonians themselves and the people who are leading in local governments on a state level are willing to look at these challenges on a person-by-person -person basis and say that homelessness must be rare and temporary, not permanent and chronic. All right, so they didn't just talk homelessness, but also gun control, climate change, and abortion. We wanted to get some insight into how well each candidate performed. So we talked with Pacific University politics professor Jim Moore. All three of them seem to be pretty tried and true to what they've uh, platformed in the past. There, there didn't seem to be, a, um, I guess, a lot of wiggling around and trying to get in and out of questions. They were pretty forward with their, with, with their stance to me. Yeah, basically, they, they took the time to really tell the people who support them, I'm really who you think I am. Um, here are my ideas, some more clear, some less clear, but that's a debate. Uh, and, and here's why you shouldn't vote for the other two, just in case you're thinking about it. Um, but it was really kind of identifying who they were. You know, ideally, we're going to have four, five, six of these debates over the course from now until the middle of October. So we may get a real good conversation that goes beyond this who I am to how do you react in different situations? You know, I'd love to see a debate question that isn't how you feel on abortion. We know what their answer is going to be on abortion. There's no mystery there. I'd like him to answer a question like, what was the hardest decision you ever had to make in politics? When did you not get your way in politics and how did you then move on and work with the people who had defeated you? You know, the things that happen to a governor all the time. I'd love to see questions like that. Okay, making a note to self for the next debate, right? Well, the part Jim Moore found most interesting in the entire thing though, was at the end of the, de de the debate when the candidates got to ask each other questions. I, th I think the, the part at the end where the candidates asked each other questions was actually pretty neat. I'd like to see a lot more of that. Uh, the most interesting thing to me, though, was uh, Tina Kotek's question to Christine Drazen about whether or not she would publicly say whether or not Donald Trump had lost the election. And she had all this stuff about, no, I talked to Oregon, that's my issues. But she finally said Donald Trump didn't win. She didn't say he lost, but he said, she said he didn't win the election. Christine, you've been asked many, many times about the 2020 election, and each time you've pivoted when asked. You've never directly answered the question. As far as I know, you have never publicly said that Donald Trump lost the presidency in the national election, not just in Oregon, but nationally. So will you say today that the results of the national election in 2020 were legitimate and that Donald Trump lost? Yeah, thank you for that question. I didn't realize there was so much confusion in your mind on this one, so let me clarify. I have, I continue to focus on Oregon, so my questions to almost every question, I try to bring it back to Oregon, try to focus on this state. I'm running for governor, I'm not running for Congress, I'm not running for uh, any federal level of, you know, of office. So that is why I continually come back to that issue. And I do stand with Oregonians who want to ensure that we don't have fraud in any category in government from employment department checks all the way through to our elections. So that is important to me. So it's an opportunity to address that issue. But as it relates to the 2020 election, there has never been an issue for that with me. Uh, Donald Trump did not win. Joe Biden did. He is our president. 
I'm going to be really fascinated to see how that plays with the Republicans in the state who, like the rest of the country, more than half of them feel that the 2020 election was stolen. They believe the big lie. That's part of their political identity. So it'll be fascinating to see how that plays out as we go into the, the election and, and outreach to voters, especially on the Republican side. It really does seem to be the new litmus test for the Republican Party is do you believe the election was stolen? Do you believe Joe Biden rightfully won it or Trump lost? Um, why do you think that's effective? Shouldn't we be focusing on the issues or do you think that really is a, a really big part that we should be examining with how Republicans think? In the primaries this year, it has actually been a really big part of how Republicans are thinking and we need to be paying attention to it. But there is some evidence, so anecdotal. Also, people are beginning to notice it in focus groups. Even people who are strong Trump supporters are beginning to say, I don't think Trump can win in 2024. He's too divisive. We need to move beyond looking backwards to 2020, and we need to be looking forward for issues and candidates that will carry us through 2024. And so I, the, the Republican Party is beginning to possibly shift on this, but we really won't know until after the 2022 elections. Simple, do Donald Trump's endorsements win elections in the general election, or do they lose the elections? If they win, Donald Trump is still the lodestar of the Republican Party. The 2020 election is still centered to the Republican Party. If they lose, no, we move on. Um, but that, that'll wait until November to really tell us what, what that answer is.